Joseph in Jail from Genesis 39 through Genesis 40, verse 23. What would you think if everyone got bigger pieces of cake than you did? Well, I'd think it was unfair. When you think that something is unfair, what do you do? Do you tell your parents, that's not fair, Mom and Dad? Do you pout? Get a poochy lip? Do you get angry? Sometimes things only seem unfair. Like when you can't play with a friend until you finish your chores. But other times, things really do seem unfair. It seems unfair that some people get diseases and have to go to the hospital, while other people are healthy. It seems unfair that some people are born in rich nations, and other people are born in poor nations. Today, we're going to find out how God helps us when things are unfair. When life's unfair, God is there. Joseph had been taken by slave traders from his home in Canaan and sold in Egypt. Now he was owned by an Egyptian officer named Potiphar. Joseph was a slave. That's not fair. Joseph didn't speak Egyptian or Arabic. He didn't know anybody. He was totally alone. He was a young man who'd been treated like a prince until his brothers threw him into a pit and sold him. That's not fair. It seems like Joseph was in a really unfair situation. Let's hear the other side of the story. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. That's from Genesis chapter 39. That's fair. This was pretty amazing. Joseph didn't even speak the language, but God was with him. And because of Joseph, Potiphar was blessed by God too. Everything went better in Potiphar's house, and Potiphar was glad. He didn't have to worry about anything in his house. So he kept on putting Joseph in charge of more and more things. That's fair. There was only one person Joseph was not in charge of, and that was Potiphar's wife. Now Joseph was a handsome guy, and Potiphar's wife noticed how handsome he was. Mrs. Potiphar had a really bad idea. The Bible says she wanted Joseph to sleep with her, but she was married to Potiphar. So Joseph stayed as far from Mrs. Potiphar as he could. But Mrs. Potiphar kept coming after him every day, trying to convince him to do this wrong thing. Here's what he told her. There is none greater in this house than I. Neither hath he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Even though he was a slave, Joseph knew who he really belonged to, God, and he was not going to sin against God. And it came to pass, as she spake to Joseph day by day, that he hearkened not unto her to lie by her or to be with her. So she was going after him every day, day after day, but Joseph didn't listen to her. Mrs. Potiphar came after him one more time, and she grabbed hold of his garment. When Joseph ran from her, his garment slipped off, and he left it with Mrs. Potiphar. With his garment in her hand, she had a bad idea. Mrs. Potiphar waved the garment around. She told everyone that Joseph had attacked her. That's not fair. When Potiphar heard this, he didn't ask Joseph for his side of the story. He just got mad. That's not fair. Suddenly, boom, Joseph went from being Potiphar's most important servant to being a prisoner. That's not fair. Here's what happened to Joseph in prison. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. The Lord was with Joseph. 
and the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison, and whatsoever they did there, he was the doer of it. Once again, the Lord was with him, even in this crazy situation that he did not deserve to be in. You see, God had a big plan to save Joseph's family from starvation. And unfair as it seems, Joseph being in prison was a part of that big plan. Some time later, two men were brought to jail. One was the head royal baker, and the other was the chief royal cupbearer. One night, both of these men had very strange dreams. Joseph noticed the next morning that they were upset, and he asked Pharaoh's officers that were with him in the ward of his lord's house, saying, Wherefore look ye so sadly today? And they said unto him, We have dreamed a dream, and there is no interpreter of it. And Joseph said unto them, Do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me them, I pray you. Joseph listened to the cupbearer's dream. In my dream, behold, a vine was before me, and in the vine were three branches, and it was as though it budded, and her blossoms shot forth, and the clusters thereof brought forth ripe grapes. And Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup, and I gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand. Joseph listened to the cupbearer's dream. He told him what the dream meant. In three days, the chief royal cupbearer would get his old job back. And then Joseph added, When this happens, and things are going well for you, please remember me. Please return my kindness and mention my situation to Pharaoh. I've done nothing to deserve being in prison. That's fair. When the chief baker saw that the interpretation was good, he said unto Joseph, I also was in my dream, and behold, I had three white baskets on my head. And in the uppermost basket there was of all manner of baked meats for Pharaoh. And the birds did eat them out of the basket upon my head. Then Joseph told the baker what his dream meant too, but it was not so pleasant. In three days, Pharaoh was going to have the baker killed. Sure enough, three days later, it was Pharaoh's birthday. And indeed, he did send for both men from the prison. And things happened exactly as Joseph had said they would. The chief royal cupbearer did get his old job back. And after that, every day he served the Pharaoh his drink, close enough to talk with Pharaoh whenever he wanted. But the head royal cupbearer did not remember Joseph. He did not mention Joseph's situation to the Pharaoh. That's not fair. But that's not the end of the story. God's big plan was working just perfectly, even though Joseph couldn't see yet what God was doing. Joseph lived through many unfair things, but God was with him even when he was put in prison. When unfair things happen and we feel unhappy or discouraged, we can remember that God is with us and will help us too. Here's our verse today. Isaiah 41, 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Isaiah 41, 10. Let's say it together. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Isaiah 41.10 God's word tells us that he is always with us. He will encourage us and help us even when people treat us in ways that we don't deserve. We all experience unfair things. Sometimes these things aren't big problems, like when we get a smaller piece of cake than someone else does. Other times, though, 
unfair things can be really big problems. But no matter how hard things get, God doesn't want us to be afraid or upset. He's with us and he will help us just like he helped Joseph. Let's think about our lesson today. Joseph's life was filled with unfair things. The same is true for God's very own son, Jesus Christ. Jesus was unfairly treated when he was crucified by the very people he came to save. But just as God used the unfair things in Joseph's life to save Joseph's family, he ultimately used Jesus' death and resurrection to bring salvation to all who believe in Jesus. Just like God was with Joseph in his hard times, God was with Jesus and brought him back to life. God used this very unfair thing to rescue everyone who believes in Jesus. No matter how unfair something is, God is with us and helps us. So here's our big idea today. Even when life is unfair, God is with me and helps me. Can you say that with me? Even when life is unfair, God is with me and helps me. There will always be things in life when something unfair happens, but we know God will help us. We can pray and ask for God's help when things are unfair. This week, let's talk to God about the unfair things that happen and then watch for ways that He will help us. Remember, even when life is unfair, God is with me and helps me. The Faithful Hall of Fame, Joseph. This is Joseph, hey. who was the son of Israel and Rachel. Ah. He was his father's favorite, so his brothers hated him oh. and sold him into slavery. Yeep. You see, Joseph was taken to Egypt, Ooh. and Potiphar, one of the Pharaoh's officials, bought him for his household. God was with Joseph, and he did well in Potiphar's house. Oh! Potiphar saw that God made everything Joseph did a success. Aha! So he put Joseph in charge of his whole house. Yeah! And God blessed Potiphar's house because of this. Potiphar's wife saw how well Joseph was doing in the house, and she wanted to make him do bad things. Joseph ran away from her because he wanted nothing to do with someone who would try to make him do the wrong thing. This made Potiphar's wife angry, and she wanted to be rid of Joseph. Huh? So she lied and made Potiphar believe that Joseph had done the bad things that she wanted him to do. Potiphar burned with anger against Joseph and sent him to prison. While Joseph was in prison, again, he did well and the warden soon made him responsible for all that was done there. God was with Joseph and gave him success in whatever he did. When two full years had passed, Pharaoh was having unsettling dreams. Pharaoh did not understand his dreams, so he sent for Joseph. Pharaoh asked Joseph to tell him the meaning of his dreams. With God's help, Joseph told Pharaoh that the dreams told of what could come in the future, and he explained all the dreams to the Pharaoh. Pharaoh believed that what Joseph was saying was true. 
He trusted Joseph as a wise man. And he put him in charge of the land of Egypt, of Pharaoh's palace, and of all his people. Things were going great for Joseph. Right over there. Until one day, Potiphar's wife tried to trick him. When her tricks didn't work, she told lies about Joseph. And Potiphar what? believed her. Oh, God. Potiphar threw Joseph into jail. Poor Joseph. His brothers sold him. A lady lied about him. And he was thrown into jail. It wasn't fair. But God had a plan for Joseph. I dreamed I saw a vine. One day, on vine another prisoner branches. told Joseph about a dream he'd had. Joseph listened carefully, and God showed him what the man's dream meant. In three days, you will be working for the king of Egypt, like you did before being put in prison. Ah. Sure enough, that's exactly what happened. Another prisoner dreamed he had three baskets of bread that he had baked for the king. In his dream, the birds kept eating up all the bread. Joseph didn't have very good news about the dream. In three days, you will die. Joseph told the truth. The man did die. One night, the king of Egypt dreamed that seven skinny cows came from the river and ate up seven fat cows. No one could figure out what the dream meant. Your Highness, call for Joseph, said the first man who had told Joseph his dream in prison. And God showed Joseph what the king's dream meant. There will be seven years with lots of food. Yeah. Yeah. Followed by seven years with almost no food. The king knew that Joseph was right. 